Checking out the Vivor 7500 watt garage heater. Now typically this would be recommended for a two car garage or shop, but it's working pretty good in my three car, so I wouldn't let that dissuade you. And you think sometimes you have to go up to the 10,000 watt version, but not always. These things are pretty efficient, and I really love that it comes with that remote control. Let's look at the basic layout here. You've got the control panel up front, adjustable louvers to really direct the airflow where you want it. The mounting bracket is adjustable to any one of four different positions, so I like that because it'll handle not only a typical ceiling mount, but you could also wall mount this. There's certain setback requirements listed in the manual, but really the bracket takes care of most of it. As you face the unit, the electrical knockout is on the left side and that's pre-punched, so a little bit easier installation than other models. I've had several different brands of garage heaters and the build quality on this one looks really good. One thing I noticed immediately was the external temperature probe. And the reason that's a benefit is it's outside of the metal box of the heater, so it's going to be more accurate reading the temperature in your garage. Remove the single screw at the front bottom of the machine. And you'll be able to lower the hinged panel to access the electrical hookups. Now it is recommended that you have this connected by a licensed electrician, but the hookups are simple, just two hot lugs and a grounding terminal. I'll temporarily install this so I can show you the remote features. Ground wire is secured on a ring terminal. And the two hot leads are secured without terminals in these lug screws. The 7500 watt heater calls for a minimum wire gauge of 8 AWG, so you got to use pretty thick gauge wire. Now Vivor, the manufacturer, recommends a breaker size maximum 50 amp, but have your electrician verify that the size of your breaker matches the gauge of wire you used. For the permanent installation, your electrician may recommend some conduit. What I really like about the Vivor unit is the controls are super simple. The remote has a power on, a mode button, and then an up and down to either select the functions or control the temperature. So couldn't get much easier on the controls for this heater. Hit the power button to get it going and the display will blink momentarily. And once that stops flashing, you can hit the mode button once and then the arrows up or down to select either a low or high heat setting. Or you can hit the mode button twice and the temperature display will flash and from there you can choose your desired thermostat setting. The unit will continue to heat up to that point and turn off automatically. I also like that you get the current room display. And this unit really throws out some nice comfortable heat. At six feet away the sound measures 56 decibels and at 10 feet away it's just 54 decibels. So I like that it has good heat output but it's also a very quiet running unit. More often than not, you'll use the remote control, but if you want to use the buttons right on the control panel, it's the same thing. Press it once to select high or low mode, or press that mode button twice until the display flashes, and from there you can just select your desired temperature. When you power the unit off, the fan will continue to run briefly just to exhaust the last bit of heat from the unit. Now, of course, you want to follow any installation instructions and local electrical codes, but I was really impressed that even when it's running, the outside of this does not get hot to the touch. So if you're looking for a garage heater this winter and you want something that's going to be a lot more efficient than a space heater and won't blow the breakers in your electrical panel, I think this Vivor 7500 watt version would be a great choice.